Welcome to sports everybody, Buddy Heal and the Sacramento Kings with a tough one last night at home against the Dallas Mavericks. Kings going down 35-31 after one, pretty even second quarter, but the Kings still trailed by four at the half. Third quarter, Mavs outscored the Kings by 11 to pad their lead and despite a big fourth quarter from Sacramento, it was too little too late. Kings going down 127-123, Buddy. 10 of 23 from the field, but he only went 3 for 11 from behind the three-point arc, finishing up with 25 points in 37 minutes. I, mean, I think at the end of the game, we, 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 did, we did pretty fine, but the start of the third quarter, we that's when it, we, got, we, got, we, we let it got away from us when he was able to get downhill, and then Tim Hardaway, Tyler Hardaway was able to get loose. He got some buckets, and, uh, and that's the game right there. And I think the fourth quarter, we made a, a fight back, but... Other than that, you know, that if we just shut that third quarter off, you know, we probably would have won the game. But, you know, uh, good game by them. You know, they, we got a good game plan, but uh, Luka just picked us apart. No excuses, man. We just got to come on and be ready. And uh, like I said, it happens all the time. We always say we can learn from this and learn from that, but we just got to figure out how to win. That's all that matters at the end of the day. The high school basketball season rolling along. We get an update tonight from Amajal Knowles. Well, January means that high school basketball in the country is certainly heating up. While the GSSA action is currently on pause, the BSA and BIISS resuming action yesterday, starting off with the latter over at Temple Christian. As the TC Suns took on the Nassau Christian Academy Crusaders, the Suns would use the home court advantage to get out to an early double-digit lead after one. The calling card for TC throughout the game, however, would be their tenacious full-court press they used throughout the duration of the game to force a handful of turnovers and convert them into easy baskets. TC would cruise to the 82-53 win and improve to 5-2 on the year. I think for the most part, we stuck to the game plan. We played good defense for about maybe three quarters. We try to keep the guys in shape as best as we can so that we can get them in an in and out kind of motion. Also, we have 12 guys deep so I could move them and change them for when we need it. And all really depends on the game flow. This game kind of worked into where we could work in some of our presses and we could be able to push the ball and stay up tempo. We execute our defense properly. We play it hard. We play with hard and we run our offense. It's uh, now a perfection, but we weren't perfect. We could play better than this. Uh, at the start, our defense wasn't as strong, but when we started Talking on defense, our defense grows stronger and stronger. I lead them all turnovers on their on their side, and we took the ball more. On the losing end, the man roaming the sidelines with the Crusaders said, despite the loss, his team did walk away from the game with some positive takeaways. Just lack of communication, um, just um, more development, I would say. Um, we were a, a team that isn't known to be a basketball team, but they are a growing team, and really, these are some good kids. I would I would rather I would rather coach. A team that has character and the coach of a team that doesn't have character. Over the Hope Center, the Mom Scholastic Association in the midst of their playoff push over an intermediate boys in San Pedro Lobos took on Horizon Christian Academy. And this one was another lopsided affair as the Lobos would get out to an early lead and never look back. The team would use their athleticism to get to the basket early and often and would pick up the W despite not having their coach on the sideline. Lobos would take this one 44 to 15. We played defense, we executed, we score, and yeah, get plenty of steals. All we had to do was focus on press, it wasn't as nice. We, 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 we worked on this at the beginning. He wasn't so good, but now, we're very good now. We wasn't listening, we wasn't playing D. Everybody's trying to do their own thing. We wasn't looking, and we missed the layups. For Zenith Soul Sports, I'm Amajal Knowles. The Providence Basketball Association back on court last night. Double interaction at the AF Adderley Gym. Up first in Division Two, the Yori Central Store Giants and Sports Center Elite. Giants stopping their way to a 26-15 lead after one. Increased that advantage to 46-30 at the half. That lead would jump to 76-48 after three. But in the fourth, the Elites made a run with the Giants going to their bench. In the end, though, it would be the Giants holding on 96-91 to remain perfect on the season at 10-0. The loss drops the Elites to 3-6. and six. We came out really aggressive at the beginning of the game. And I guess in the second half, we, we just decided to coach throughout the game. And it, it, it actually brought the game back to closer than we thought it would have. That's actually our game plan throughout the whole season is to get our more of our bench players and our younger players more time so that when it comes down to playoffs, um, everybody will be a factor in the games, you know, um, we, we, so we can depend on the whole team, not just one or two players, but that's, that's the mentality of our team is to get everybody involved. 
the fight in the fourth quarter was beautiful. You know, I just wish one day, one single day, this team could come with a heart to begin to begin the game with fire instead of trying to build through it and when it's always in to try to jump on the game. Everybody in this gym could see this team could play with everybody. But it's up to them to feel the heart and feel the spirit and just come out here to perform as good as they could perform. Not wait until it's crucial. Ain't nobody could beat this team if this team come out with some hearts. On to Division I now. The Patmore Rebels jumping out early on the Fort Charlotte Defenders, leading 23-12 after one. Rebels also the big second quarter. Their lead grew to 47-26 at the half. Defenders outscoring the Rebels by 10 in the third to get back within 65-54. But that deficit too much to overcome. Rebels win 82-72. Martin Conniff leading the win to win a game-high 26 points. Jason Cambridge adding 16 points and 10 rebounds. Theo Ferguson also with 16 points, while Tyrone Sands Jr. followed with 10. Gregory Seymour leading the defenders, 18 points and 16 boards. Clayton Tucker, 18 points as well. Leon Ramming adding 12 points, while Rufus Dean and Carrington Dean had 10 points apiece. League play picking back up again tomorrow night. A big day at the Centerville Primary School, thanks to Ricardo de Merit and Overtime Sports. The school now has 18 new basketballs, 18 volleyballs and 18 new soccer balls. It's an initiative that was started by physical education teacher Shirlene Moss. At the beginning of last term, um, I went to my principal with the idea of hosting a raffle in aid of us being able to purchase um, P equipment and sporting uniforms. So last term I would have done the presentation for the sporting uniforms which included uniforms for the basketball and the volleyball teams. And so the remaining of the funds in collaboration with Overtime Sports, we were able to purchase the equipment needed. And um, I really wanted um, 30 balls each, but you know, we weren't able to do that. So 18 is even better. At least I know that the children will be paired up and there won't be too much waiting time when it comes to activities during the PE classes. She had some old worn out equipment that didn't even have enough to efficiently conduct classes. So I thought that giving back to her and giving her some well needed equipment would, would assist. Eugene Short in his first professional volleyball season in Finland. After finishing up his eligibility at the University of Charleston, Stewart now showing what he can do on the European circuit. The season has been decent. Um, I think that we as a team are doing, we're doing a lot of good work. Um, we still have a lot of things to work on. And um, I think that we can get better as time goes on. Um, I think the highlight of my season has been just to be able to play in front of a large number of people. Um, I think the most per the most people that I played in front of was probably about 700 people. Um, it gives me the excitement to know that I can represent the country being the only Bahamian on my team. I think we got about 14 more games left of the season and then playoffs. The 2020 Great Exuma Classic, all history now. Kelsey Johnson has a recap. The first stop on the Con Ferry Golf Tour brought some of the top golfers to the Sandals Emerald Bay in Exuma. The four-day golf tournament played on the Greg Norman 18-hole golf course was won by Tommy Ganey on Thursday. All the players knew the wind was going to blow hard. And we just had to keep our mindset as par is a good score. And you make a few birdies on some holes where the wind's going to help you. And then the hard holes, you just try to stay away from the big numbers. And that was the big thing this week. You know, if you look at all the scorecards from all the players, I stayed away from the big numbers. Um, and I'm sitting here as the winner because of that. Ganey best the top field, which included Dylan Wu and John Oder, who were tied for second and finished four strokes behind him. Like Ganey, Will Wilcox found the course challenging. Wilcox was in a three-way tie for 16th. This is such a tough golf course and such a good test. Like, the wind is just howling, and um, I'm, I'm very happy with it. I haven't played since May last year, so it was a good start uh, for the season for sure. Brushing off the cobwebs, I mean, how was it coming back on the greens for you? It was it was nice. I, I definitely surpassed my expectations. Just making the cut was step one, and then uh, 
played good on the weekend. I mean, I had a horrible front nine today, but I mean, it's just so difficult to play in this win. So, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm very pleased. The event was sponsored by the Ministry of Tourism and Sandals Resorts. It was also sanctioned by the Professional Golfers Association. Representing the Ministry of Tourism was Emmett Sanders, senior manager in the ministry, who thanked the golfers for choosing the Bahamas, more so Sandals and Exuma. As you go around the world, we wish you to, to say to your colleagues and your friends that I was to a place called Exuma. The people here are fantastic. When you look at hospitality in the dictionary, you would see the word Exuma. I can tell you about it, but it's a place that you must go and experience it for yourself. Kelsey Johnson, ZNS Total Sports. That's a look at sports. The Bahamas tonight comes back after the break.